Welcome to Get Green, Northwest Indiana, your home for lawn care solutions with Steve Daly. Each podcast, you'll learn the secret tips to growing healthy green grass and best practice solutions for watering, weed and feed, aeration, and mowing. Here are your hosts, Steve Daly and Jim Jano. All right, let's jump right in. So, Steve, why aerate a lawn? What is the purpose? Let it breathe. Break down thatch. Promote healthier roots. Let the water get down to where it needs to go. Air to get in and decompose some of the thatch. You're pulling out pieces of thatch. So, so basically, you're, you're letting the water and the oxygen get to the root of the problem. Yes. Well, yeah. I, uh, you, uh, yeah, you got to get to the roots. Yeah. See, I'm starting to pick uh, up a little bit on you. See? <laughs> All right, so uh, let's paint the mental picture for us. What, what happens? No, you roll over it with a core aerator. There's, there's different style of aerators. And um, generally the, the healthiest practice, especially in a clay or a loam soil, is to use a core aerator, pull the plugs. Um, by pulling a plug out, it's picking out a piece of thatch, uh, creating a hole for water, air, you know, get down in there. Think of it like pruning shrubs or something. I mean, you're you're pruning this out. You're removing this dead material, allowing nutrients to get through where it couldn't penetrate before as well. Before I figured out that you could actually do it for less money than I was paying for fertilizer, I tried every way I could to save money. I even went with those goofy-looking shoes that had cleats where you would walk back and forth your whole yard, back and forth, and I remember thinking, man, I'm hoping my neighbors aren't looking at me. Is that do anything? Mm, compress the clay soil that you live on. Um, and I got a lot of clay, too. Yeah, it doesn't really help you in your, your situation. The only place where that would actually even make a difference is some of the areas with sandy soils. And by the time you go through, you're still pushing. Like, if it's got a heavy thatch layer, you're just kind of pushing down the thatch layer. You're not really getting through it. Um so, no, it really doesn't provide any kind of benefit whatsoever. Now, how do you differentiate thatching versus aeration? I mean, what, what's the difference? Well, again, you're, you're, you're more pruning when you're using a aerator, okay? You're picking out pieces of it. Uh, when you go through with a dethatch or a power rake, you're aggressively going into that thatch layer and cutting roots and shredding and... It's, it can be beneficial depending on your situation, uh, but in general, it's, it's a better practice to aerate on a consistent basis than to be using a dethatcher. I hear the word overseeding a lot. Uh, uh, how do you aerate lawn and overseed, and, and is it necessary? If your lawn is get, taking some damage from a summer or if it's thinning out, then yeah, aeration and overseeding is necessary. Or if you're, you know, let your lawn go for several years and it's deteriorated and you start fertilizing it and weed controlling it to clean it up and you're taking the time to repair it, um, then yeah, it might need some, some overseeding. And the practice is just you go through the lawn, you pull plugs, and then you overseed it and allow the seed to fall down into these plug holes. And as you feed it, the lawn fills in. So, and that basically, you're, you're planting seeds deep in the ground where they need to be, and then you're allowing oxygen and water, and you're basically giving it some room to breathe. Generally, a core aerator is going to pull a plug anywhere from two and a half to, say, three and a half inches is where you're going to want to be set in most soil types. You know, that's generally where, where they are set at. Um, if you need to get more aggressive, there's certain aerators that will go a little deeper. And do you aerate the lawn or do you fertilize first? Um, well, I mean, if you're aerating it, uh, fertilization afterwards, after you've created the nutrient movement, I mean, is actually beneficial and, and better. Um, I'm not saying uh, fertilizing any time is usually fine. Um, but, I mean, if you've got a binding thatch layer, then, yeah, it would be better to aerate it first and, and let the lawn breathe and, and take in the nutrients you're supplying it. Uh, should you aerate clay soil? You can aerate the lawn 
as it really as frequently as you like. I mean, if you do it spring and fall, that's enough. Um, in a clay soil, it, it allows it to breathe. Uh, generally, I, I recommend at least doing it once a year in clay. Um, every other year, at the very least, uh, you got to keep that lawn breathing and be able to accept nutrients. Uh, in other soil types, every second or third year, depending. Um, so with sand, you don't aerate as much as you do with clay. It's not as necessary to aerate in sand because the soil's porous. Things move through it. Loams are more por porous also than, than clay. So, um, like I said, every, if you're in a loamy soil, you can do it every probably two to three years. Uh, as long as your thatchler's in check. Got to keep your thatchler in check. If it's getting thick and needs to be aerated or if you're seeing certain things that are dictating it, then, then you go ahead and do it more frequently. But uh, that, that's usually the rule of thumb every couple of years. What about if, what if you have a, a, a sprinkler? Um, if you're aerating with a sprinkler system, generally your uh, irrigation lines are buried deep enough. And so usually they're running at least six inches deep, if not deeper. But the heads come up into the yard. Um, they're at surface level. Uh, an aerator can damage the heads. So generally, like when we're doing an aeration, we'll call the week before and say, hey, we plan on coming out to aerate your lawn next week. Please mark your irrigation heads so we don't, don't hit them. You like to integrate aeration with a full lawn service. Why is that? It should be done when you're doing a full service program. Uh, at, like I said, at least occasionally, whether it's every other year. Uh, every year in clay is probably smart because of the compaction. Um, but when you're feeding it that frequently, your thatchler builds quicker. Oh. You need to manage your thatchler. So that's, you know, thatchler is just a series of dead and living rhizomes off of the root system that's coming closer and closer together. They're so basically a weak lawn doesn't need thatching much, but who wants a weak lawn? Yeah. Right, correct. Yeah, the more you feed it, the more it, the more dense it becomes, the more necessary it is to aerate it. We only really offer it with our full service programs. Um, you know, we want people that are committed to having their lawn look nice. I'm not looking to come out there and just aerate your lawn. I don't have time for that. I got to commit my aerations to my customers. So it's more a matter of prioritizing your customers. Correct. Not correct. rewarding something just because it's a it's a quick job. And a... I'm not chasing a buck. I'm you know I, I'm doing it to help provide a service for my customers. And it's part of a total package. Correct. You want to aerate, you know, spring and fall. Um, fall is generally considered the best. The way I look at it is. If you do take any summer damage from, say, disease issues or drought, uh, then you can seed it afterwards and it'll help recover the lawn from the damage that it has incurred over the summer. And it gives it the seed two cool seasons before it hits summer heat. Let's finish with how important is aeration and where does it stand in, this, in, in, in its importance? Um, it's very important. It's anytime you're trying to get the lawn to gather nutrients. I mean, that's the most important thing that we're doing. I, we're fertilizing a lawn, but if a thatch layer is building up to a point where it's not allowing the materials to get through it, then what are we doing? You know, so you have to get in there. You got to keep thatch management in mind when you're dealing with any kind of lawn care program and you want to keep compaction issues in the root zone in mind when you're dealing with that so well steve uh we really do appreciate your taking time to tell us a little bit about aeration and uh, where can they learn more about uh, your services uh, www.permagreenperma-green.com well steve thank you so much for being with us today and uh happy green lawns everybody thanks you have a good one thanks steve take care